There's option B. I'm doing like A, B, C, number it. <laughs> it's fine. You understand. Okay. Option B. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, goofball. Hey guys, Candace here. And I wanted to talk with you guys about a topic that I have been meaning to tell you guys about since after the first video, because I promised that I would and just haven't gotten to it. So stay tuned for that. But before we jump into that, like, share, and subscribe, hit the notification bell so that way you'll know when videos are posted. Today's topic is on our inner toddler. What is your inner toddler? You might be asking. Great question. Your inner toddler is that part of you that tries to get attention. It can manifest in different ways. Sometimes that might manifest as your anxiety, as worry, fear, panic, or something emotionally inside of you that is triggered by a thought an external factor, something kind of triggers it to cry out. Here's the thing about toddlers. No caveat. <laughs> I'm not a parent, but I have parents. Okay. So the parent is supposed to look for what it is that the child is worried about. What is going on with the child? Why is the child crying? Why is the child screaming? Why is the child angry? Why is the child fussing? Why is the child giving me the silent treatment? Why is the child acting out? What is going on? Now, the adult in the room or whoever is in charge has a number of options to handle the situation. You can either A, go to the child, ask the child what's wrong, let the child tell you exactly what they think is going on, and you just give it to them and do that every single time. Doesn't even matter what's going on. Whatever they say, go ahead and do that. They stop crying. They stop fussing. And you don't have to worry about it. There's option B. Let the child cry. And you can completely and totally ignore them. Just... Anytime they do that, just let them have their moment until they basically wear themselves out and go do something else or take a nap. <laughs> naps, naps are, uh, <laughs> they're holy. Okay, <laughs> glory, get some rest, child. There's also option C. Option C is going to the child, assessing the situation, having the child, you know, calm down and then better use their words to go through explaining what's going on and then using the maturity and the wisdom of being the adult in the room to address what's actually the problem versus the expression of what may or may not be a problem. So if your inner child is going through emotions, you can in your own self also be the adult in the room within yourself. Let me give you an example. Again, anxiety, right? Really anxious about something, worried, pacing back and forth, don't know what to do. I'm starting to cry. I'm starting to freak out. I don't know if I'm going to do well on my exam tomorrow. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm not remembering anything. I don't, I, I just, I can't do it. I can't, I can't. This is horrible. I can address myself and say, what do you want? What is making you anxious? What is freaking you out? Have you studied? If not, that might be why you're freaking out. You could say, well, you've been studying and I know the exam tomorrow is really big. It might be really monumental for you. You might be in a tough spot academically and this is really important for you, but you don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid of what's going on. Collect yourself, maybe take a walk, come back, 
and allow yourself to calm down. You can also just allow yourself to go through those emotions, acknowledge the fact that those emotions are happening and know that those emotions are going to pass. Letting those emotions do what they do, let them run their course, and then eventually they'll pass and you'll be okay. You'll be able to study. You'll be able to do what it is that you need to do to get the job done. Everyone has an inner toddler. Everyone has a part of them that cries out for something, but it's our responsibility to assess the situation and see if it's valid and then either do option A, B, or C. Now, the reason why option A is not the best option is because you're basically your own enabler. What makes that difficult is that you then allow your emotions to drive your life. Your emotions and your thoughts are supplementary to how you get to move and ebb and flow in the world in purpose. And the true freedom that you have is when you're not enslaved to your emotions and the thoughts that come with those things or the thoughts that trigger emotions. When you have authority over your own emotions and thoughts to redirect them towards the things that you know are true, the things that are foundational principles that are a part of who you are and what you stand for, then you don't have to allow your emotions and your thoughts to drive your life. This is absolutely crucial for maturity, growth, really receiving all of who you are, walking in purpose, receiving your purpose, and then being liberated, being free to be exactly who you were called to be, to be exactly who you were created to be in the earth for a purpose, to impact the world with your uniqueness. Children, toddlers, they have maturing to do. You have to guide them. You have to teach them how to assess their own emotions. You have to teach them how to express themselves in a way that allows them to get what they need, not always what they just want. You wanna make sure that you are guiding the toddler in how they maneuver through life and how they filter and assess and process their emotions. If we don't do that with children, they end up being manipulative They end up getting their way all the time. And then we enable them to get what they want always when they want it. That is not growing in maturity. That is actually hindering your child from growing into being exactly who they need to be as adults, as people that know how to manage their own system. And we have to do the same. We have to be stewards over ourselves and not let our inner toddler dictate how we move in the world, but rather we work with the child, we edify the child, we shape the child, we redirect the child inside of us to understand what is important, what to keep, what to take away, how to assess, how to discard, how to process through, fine comb through your emotions and your thoughts. This takes a lot of insight to go through this process. That can be challenging, but everyone needs to be healed. Everyone needs to be whole. Everyone needs to receive their purpose in wholeness and in their healed self. Because when you try to walk in your purpose in brokenness, the cracks in who you are allow you to be swayed to and fro as you go through life. The more healed and whole you are within yourself, the more liberated you are to command yourself to know what to do when your body is reacting. It's a natural thing as human beings to emote. It's natural for us to have thought processes, but we can think above our thoughts. We can think above our emotions and guide ourselves to look into something else. If you are trying to figure out how to go on this process of redirecting your emotions, trying to redirect your thoughts, I'll give you four steps that you can take to go on this process in any of those moments when you're having an inner toddler situation. Step one, acknowledge the fact that this is happening. Let yourself know I'm clearly freaking out. I'm clearly having a moment. I am in the middle of thinking these thoughts or emoting these emotions. I'm acting out this way. Being honest that this is happening is the most important step 
Because being in denial and pretending like it's not happening or not going into the process of not just acknowledging it, but then moving forward to do something about it, that then allows you to stay in that space of either feeling like you can allow that to keep happening and basically enabling yourself. And it doesn't allow you to have accountability for what you can control. Step two, ask yourself the tough questions. What is going on? Why are you having this moment? Where is this coming from? And what is it that you actually need? We talked about this in in my video about honest surrender and I'll put a link somewhere either in the video or in the description box below but honest surrender in that video we talked about how you have the tree you have the roots of the tree and then you have the branches and the leaves off of the tree the leaves just tell you an expression of what is potentially going on at the root but it doesn't tell you what the root is you have to dig deep and you have to go figure out what's actually going on that's a mature process to go through and it is crucial in the process of actually being liberated from being enslaved to your emotions and your thoughts of the inner toddler so ask the tough questions assess be your own detective just as you would if you were a parent trying to figure out what is wrong with my child this might take getting a life coach a therapist, a psychiatrist, a mentor, a trusted friend, a pastor, someone that you believe can truly help you go down that path. Can you help me, girl? Can you help me? Because I don't know. I'm having a moment. <laughs> the more that you can get to the root of what's going on, the better you're going to be in managing yourself and not allowing your inner toddler to control your life. Step three accept what you find out at the root. This might be really challenging because it's a humbling process to own the parts that are on you, but then it's also freeing to recognize the parts that really have led to these types of reactions to things. And it helps you better understand yourself. It helps you also better decide how you wanna move forward, how you wanna better handle that moment. And that brings me to step four. Press on, move forward, choose a different response. Find ways to teach your toddler, your inner toddler, how to manage this situation. And again, this might take practice and it might take assistance, but it's not impossible. You are able to heal. Your healing is right around the corner, but you have to choose to want that healing. You have to lean a little bit, you know, Lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock with it. You have to lean into those opportunities to say, you know what? I don't want this happening anymore. I don't want to constantly allow my emotions to dictate my life. I can't just get what I want when I want it. Anyone that says that they want what they want and they get what they want when they want it, they're telling you, I let my emotions drive my life. That is not safe. That is not healthy. That's coming from a space of pain, trauma, pride, fear. And if you're one that talks like that and you're watching this video, this is your opportunity to change that narrative. I want to hear from you guys. Do you have an inner toddler? And if you say no, you be lying, okay? Because I know I have one and I'm constantly trying to... <laughs> Candace, okay, sweetie, sit down. <laughs> sit down, well, what's, what's going on? Let's talk about it. Let's... Let's process through what's happening right now. I want to know what you've done to redirect your inner toddler and what advice do you have for us? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Also hit that notification bell and share this with a friend. Heck, send it to an enemy, send it to anyone. I would greatly appreciate that. Anything else you want to find out about me, you can look in the description box below. Otherwise, take care, stay safe, God bless, and we'll talk soon. Bye. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes.
that's a sign to go to bed. Go to bed. Bye.